Agriculture is the backbone for most families in rural areas of Uganda. The western region districts are regarded as the food basket areas of the country. Most food in terms of milk, meat, Irish potatoes, matoke and fruits come from this region. When you drive along the roads in this region, you see plantations of these crops and large herds of cattle. You meet with vehicles transporting agricultural produce to the urban towns of this country. However, as you drive into the villages of one of the districts, like Kabale, you discover that what you see on the main roads is not what most people in the districts live. Most people have small pieces of land on which they grow sweet potatoes, cassava, Irish potatoes, and some beans and vegetables. Most of the agriculture work in these areas, as in other regions of the country, is done by women and children, and most food is produced by women. We learn that two in five children in this region are too short for their height, the second largest levels of malnutrition after Karamoja region. Many children suffer from anemia and deficiency in a nutrient called vitamin A. Breastfeeding practices are among the worst in the country and use of health facilities by women and children is far below average for the country. Though the beacon of food security, large number of women and children in this region get malnourished every year, a situation that has been ongoing for more than a decade. Now, you said Uganda and the government have come together to address this plight in southwest Uganda. You said has designed a community-based project that most people know as Community Connector in order to work with districts and communities to address malnutrition among women and children. This will be done through empowering the poor to bring about change in their own lives through being engaged in improved approaches that will sustainably improve their livelihoods through agriculture. How do they intend to do this? At the grassroots, partnerships with local leaders, cultural systems and families are going to be key to improve nutritional standards of women and children. Initially, in the selected districts, Two sub-counties were selected with the district leadership and political leaders. Areas that are most remote and isolated were said to suffer most malnutrition and poverty. In these sub-counties, the leadership is supposed to identify community groups that people here say are going to be effective vehicles to carry the USAID Community Connect message. Some of the groups were women groups, others were youth groups, most are farmer groups and a few are networks of people living with HIV. The leadership of these groups were provided with training on skills for mobilization, facilitation, coordinating related activities in their areas, and in delivering the best practices to improve farming, health, and nutrition. You said Community Connector will work with community groups down at the sub-county level to support families become self-sustaining through small-scale agriculture. Group members are learning to produce fruits and vegetable seedlings, seedlings for trees purposely to curb soil erosion and improve soil fertility. The groups will further be advised on how to plant and take care of the seedlings. We visited some homes where the group leaders have already planted some vegetables and fruit seedlings. It is interesting to see that you said Community Connector has not only focused on nutrition messages, but also encouraging families to grow vegetables for sale in the local markets. We visited Mrs. Beatrice Chomhendo, who is a volunteer with Community Connector. She has less than half an acre of land, but she has learned how to use it to produce vegetables for sale to meet her family's unending financial needs while reserving some food at home. Some families have livestock that were mainly to increase the family's wealth. Access to water, good sanitation and hygiene are also essential to good health and nutrition. With the outbreak of the Mabag, Community Connector volunteers promoted the put-up of tippy taps for hand washing. We saw a number of this simple technology in a number of homes. Families had also been trained on the importance of having proper disposal of waste. The USAID Community Connector and related government departments will not have impact if they do not reach many of the vulnerable families in villages in the remote areas. In order to reach large numbers, we learned that they recruited community groups in parishes and had them registered with the community development offices at sub-county level. Groups of 25 to 30 people come together at village level. We actually identified that some groups were larger than 30 people and most were made of women. The groups would meet at least once a month and anywhere, even in marketplaces or on the roadsides. 
10 groups would select a volunteer who is trained by USAID Community Connector and provide the materials to train others. The leaders of these groups are also provided with mobile phones and solar chargers, which they use to record all their activities and register all their groups and group members. For instance, we visited a group to the household of one of the members to learn how to grow fruits and vegetables. No classrooms and not even pens and books. It was fun to see a community connector volunteer stop women or men on the roadside to explain some aspects of hygiene using messages delivered through the phones. You said Community Connect is promoting the use of financial illiteracy classes in remote areas while inspiring employment opportunities in agriculture. It was interesting to see groups come together and do savings in order to have money for school fees or to buy some livestock or have some money for health care if ever needed. People enjoyed this aspect of the project as they expected to partner with Community Connector to improve their savings and management of that savings. You said Community Connect and their government partners realizes the insurmountable barriers to their noble gesture. Some of the challenges we were told include high levels of poverty in the target areas, poor infrastructure making it hard to reach the corners of the sub-counties to deliver their goals, needless to mention the difficulty for residents to reach markets to sell their produce, high illiteracy levels, especially among women, increasing teenage pregnancy, high levels of alcoholism, and few opportunities of employment. As we parked to come back to the main roads, we kept wondering of the two faces of southwestern Uganda. One face is the one we see on the road that is full of clamor and wealth, the rich soils and plantations that make the region the food basket of Uganda. The other face is hidden to many Ugandans. It is of many who are marginalized, the hungry and the poor that live daily with malnutrition. But we learned the simple actions by our development partners and our local government are making a difference even to this hidden population. And many children born today may not have to face malnutrition like their older siblings did. This crop of children may be able to complete their schooling and seek opportunities elsewhere. There is hope that these remote areas may very soon open to prosperity and also contribute to our national development.